Hello, Carly here from Carly Says. I've tried to log on a couple of times and it doesn't, it was taking ages, so I sort of zoned out there for a second. Thank you for tuning in to my show. I'm trialing a new time, 9.30-ish, always ish in my world, on Tuesday mornings. But I'll see how it goes. I would love for you to comment if you think this time works for you or not. Um, and we can go from there. I'm just playing around, seeing what happens. So I have a few fun stories today. Um, I wanted to start off with the, the Twitter employee, which I'm sure everybody's heard about, right? Um, Twitter employee shut down Donald Trump's account. For 11 minutes it was shut down while they, you know, while they realised. And initially Twitter came out and said it was done um, by human, it was an accident, it was done by human error. And then uh, Twitter, there's, a, there's an account called Twitter Government, and they done an investigation and figured out that what it actually was is an employee on their last day of work has shut down Donald Trump's account. And, uh, you know, that on the face of it, it's like, yeah, that's really cool. But I always, like, think about the, the thought process or the timeline. You know, like any one of those Twitter employees must have joked about, thought about, they had the power to shut down his account and to mess with his account, you know, like it, it's only a small window of opportunity and then you'd be fired, but they still had the power. But this person who I wish I knew who they were, this person obviously had the thought, I'm suggesting maybe discuss it with someone. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's totally worth it. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. There was somebody in their mind saying, just fucking do it. I actually had a, um, not quite to the same level, but a friend of mine who where I used to work for an insurance company and on his last day, it was a really shit, they treated us pretty badly. And on his last day, he sent an email round to the whole world, like to the whole, it was an international company. So he sent it to every single person in the email system saying how shit it was and how it was his last day and totally just bagging it the company and within like a it, like he's sitting opposite me and I was that person do it do it Gary <laughs> and so that within a few minutes he sent it and we're like just keep going pretending like nothing's happened the managers were over like in a posse and they escorted him from the building and I'm not sure that they like we we're like bye Gary <laughs> but I really I think now it was before uh, mobile phones were a, um, a big deal, but really I think now we should have been filming for his safety because they wanted to tear him limb from limb. They'd made him, he'd made them look also bad. He also burnt any bridges that he might have had with them, but I don't think he was bothered by that. But I love that that Twitter employee did it. I would have, I would have been, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would love to hear, comment, if you have... An experience like that where on your last day you went out with a bang and uh, you know for the most part I always think leave be sensible don't burn any bridges you know <laughs> like especially where I live in a small town you try to you tr try to remain professional even though you're going from somewhere that you might hate but you know the sometimes you just gotta you just gotta have a crack you know <laughs> leave a mark <laughs> um, so here's a fun story. Now this, I, could, I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. Like if I was going to write a joke, if I was talented in that way to write a joke, this is, this is how I would start. It feels like it's, you know, jokes 101. So there's a university doing a study, John Hopkins University, which I've Googled it. It is actually a university in Baltimore, Maryland. And they're doing a study on the effects of psilocybin. Now, if you're a nice person... Well, no, if you're a good person, ah, no. if you're a boring person, you might not know what psilocybin is. Psilocybin is the um, active ingredient in magic mushrooms. So they're doing a study on the effects of magic mushrooms on a bunch of religious people to see if it, it triggers a spiritual experience or revelation. I'm here to tell you, it does. It can. It would. Like, every Saturday night, those studies are conducted. The fact that a university is getting on board uh, suggests to me that they're, you know, that the, the, 
it's the wagon tail dog before the tail something it's like they've missed the boat as far as i'm concerned um i have thought for years that this should be if you but chuck a bunch of ecky in the water the shared water in theory of palestine and israel years of angst and upset and hurt and drama would be just chilled away at the dance party um no doubt no doubt in my mind so this is an actual thing that's happening and this was the writing of the article which I, I, I feel like someone's taken the piss a little bit but they rounded up dozens of religious leaders from around the world to give the magic mushrooms that's basically what they did um with the view that they would trigger a spiritual experience or a revelation so, so far they've got about 20. They've got a rabbi, a Buddhist monk, a nun, and a bunch of priests walk into a bar, <laughs> get their magic mushrooms. So they're going to put them in a living room-like setting with spiritual music and they're going to have an iPad. That's how they're going to start. Half of them will get a placebo, half of them will get magic mushies. The half with magic mushies are not going to stay that way, like just chilling in, the, in their living room-like setting. Um, interestingly enough, no Muslim or Hindu spiritual leaders have taken them up on the deal. On the offer, I mean. It's not a deal. It's research. Keep that straight. But oh, I, I think absolutely, 100%, it'll make a difference. They will have revelations and the world will be a better place. Thank you for a thumbs up. <laughs> um, so my other story is... A guy called John who gets a message on Facey. Now, lots of people have got these messages where it's like, I am, you know, Prince Aaron from Siberia or whatever, and they're asking for money. So he got a, a, an email from Joel in Liberia who was asking for premium electronic equipment to sell and split the profits. That was what he was offering this guy called John in America. So John, who obviously has too much time on his hands, <laughs> well, did at that time, emails him back saying, I don't have any, he's assuming it's a scam. He says, I don't have any electronics, but um, if you take some pictures for me, I'm in the business of selling pictures, take some pics, send them to me, and I'll try and sell them for you, and we can go Harvey's in the profit. So Joel does. Joel in Liberia takes some pictures. John gets them. And they're terrible. Like they're taken from a 1980s flip phone at best. They're terrible. So John from America emails him back saying, yeah, they're not great. I'm going to send you a camera. So he spends $30 US dollars on a camera, sends it to him, to Joel in Liberia. Joel in Liberia gets it, takes some more photos. They're still shit. So John gives him some tips. You've got to make sure that the camera is still. You've got to make sure there's good lighting. Joel goes away and practices start sending back more and more beautiful pictures that document Liberian life and the struggles that they have. And it's really like their living is really, really basic. There's shanties and, you know, they walk on dirt roads with no shoes and all that type of thing. Um, so it gets better, keeps sending them back and forward. John in America decides to make a, like he's like, oh, my God, this guy's legit. He's legitimately trying to help himself and make some money. He's not just trying to scam, you know, he could have hopped that $30 camera and just made a run for it. So he, John in America creates a photo book. It's called By, By D, Grace of God, because Joel's emails are sort of a little bit, his English is not great and he's um, gone with like D instead of the. So he's written it phonetically, I guess. So they sell the the photo book and they sell about a thousand copies at that time and they share the profits and John in America is thinking, hmm, this is going to be the time when I'll see if he runs or not. So John in America says, I'm going to donate my half to charity and I, I want that charity to be the, the child, you know, like the people of Liberia. So he sends all the money to Joel who then documents his photo in his photos he takes, it, I think it was about $1,000 in total, so 500 each. So he takes $500, he goes to the nearest bag shop, cleans it out, has to hire a taxi to carry back because he doesn't have a car, supplies school bags to five schools around the district and then buys chairs and books. And when I just went and checked, uh, backpacks, books and chairs he bought, 
it is an actual thing. I'm like, oh, this is just a story. This is one of those things. It is an actual thing you can find. It's an Indiegogo, and I think you can still order the book. And so far, they've raised 13000 US dollars for, and I don't know if all of it's gone back to Liberia, but at least a good chunk of it. And the Joel emailed him after the all that was done and said, I just want to let you know I was in debt and I was struggling and I didn't know what to do. And I thank God for you every day. Um, like, what a great, I, what a great story that John had time to do that and and a willingness. Because most people would just delete it. I think I probably would. You just assume it was a scam. But it's a good message not to judge people and to trust in people as well. And it doesn't matter whether you've got. You know how, like, Joel in Liberia literally had nothing but debt and he still reached out and tried and took the opportunities as they come. I love that. He could easily just be feeling sorry for himself. So that's my life for today. It's a quickie. Um, thank you for tuning in. Feel free to comment below. One of the problems that I'm having with my morning time ones is lots of people watch them after. But oh, hang on a minute. Yes. Yes? Why is the koala not a bear? People, why is the koala not a bear? He tried really hard, but he didn't make the koalifications. <laughs> he tried really hard, but he didn't make the koalifications. That's from Roberto. <laughs> um, so I want to finish. So what I was saying was comment um, if you can, because then that shares the love with Facey. Um, so everybody knows that we've done this and we've had fun and to ch tune in and chill out on Tuesdays. Yeah, baby. Um, have a saying for you all to live for this day. If This is a uh, mem that I've seen from Colette O'Mahony. Oh, Mahoney. I've spent too long trying to make melancholy convincing. I'm taking back the day I belong to the extraordinary. Oh! I feel like that's how I feel about dishes. No more. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you all next week. Bye.